want to praise God together for one thing, and we're going to get into this word. We know that God is doing great things. We know God is always doing great things, but we do want to, since we've all been in such prayer, we want to thank God that on Wednesday, Brother Paul Johnson went home, and he's watching. Amen. And so we give God some praise for him being home. Text today. Come. 
come from Psalm 34 and then Philippians 4. Psalm 34 and 14 in the message says simply this, turn your back on sin and do something good. Embrace peace. Don't let it get away. Seek peace. Pursue it. And then Philippians 4, 6, and 7. I uh, will lift up just 6 and 7 from the uh, New Living Translation. It says, do not worry. Do not worry. Learn to pray about everything. Give thanks to God as you ask him for what you need. The peace of God is much greater than the human mind can understand. This peace will keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, ministers at the gate. And those who are serving on this morning, we want to thank our greeters and our ushers for what they do to make us feel the presence of God on our way in the door. Amen. 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 Y'all give God some praise. Well, church, there are many reasons to be alarmed in the natural. The leadership of the state has gone mad. The polarizing climate has put the minds of our children in danger as education has become the pawn manipulated for political leverage. Every day there's something that lets us know that our communities are not on the radar. And the watering down of history and, our, and the story of us is a necessary evil to neutralize anything that elevates the best of our culture. This week, so much is happening. The bloody unrest in the Middle East and in Israel and in Israel and the mindset of retaliation without regard for human life. The justification of annihilation has set in motion that which the Bible warns are signs of the last days. Wars and rumors of wars, pestilence and earthquakes, not to mention the lack of leadership in the governing body that decides how America responds on the world stage. There are some very scared, not, not afraid, but scared and angry people out here. So many of those of us who are on social media, you see there's an argument every five seconds. That, that have people speaking in very volatile words because of differences of opinion as misinformation about that situation in Israel and in Gaza. Has persons taken sides while lacking understanding of the atrocities that all are facing. So what do we do in the face of so much confusion and confrontation? It's a mess. Anybody say it's a mess? Yes. It's a mess. And the forecast looks like more mess to come. Yet, as children of the Most High King, as followers of that great revolutionary Jesus, we must not find ourselves in trepidation. Because the weather is bad. We have survived bad weather before. We must do as the psalmist declared. Pursue. Radoff is the, uh, the Hebrew word. We must, have, we must pursue peace. We must pursue shalom. Persistently. That word is hebel. So we can receive Respond, not react. Y'all hear that? Respond, not react to the drama of the climate in America, the climate globally, and in our own lives. For some of you say, well, I can't worry about the war going on over there. There's a war going on in my house. I can't worry about the problem with the leadership in Washington I can't get a break in for a word. But we must em 
embrace what God, what Paul has taught us in Philippians 4. Paul wrote it. I want y'all to know Paul, Paul wrote this letter and many more. While under some very trying circumstances himself. Paul wrote a whole lot of this while later. In jail. Put in jail for the cause of Christ. Well, we got to be careful how we complain about what we're going through. Some of us can't stand to have a little uncomfortableness, let alone be in jail for the cause of Christ. He's under these trying circumstances, and yet, this is a letter that is filled with joy and triumph. I don't know how he found joy in jail. But he did. I don't know how he kept speaking victory while in chains. But he did. And I find encouragement every time I read Philippians. And yet, I can never forget that when the author wrote it, he was sitting in a dark, dank prison cell for having preached the gospel of Jesus Christ. But nevertheless, he rejoiced because God was at work through his imprisonment, using it to bring about the furtherance of the spread of that very same gospel. And he emboldened others to preach it in his place. Paul implores the church at Philippi and us today. Don't panic. Pray. Petition. Prayers and peace will be the problem. He tells us to do this. He tells us to pursue peace persistently. Pursue peace persistently. In other words, don't ever get too down that you can't look for peace. First thing he tells us is don't panic. Charles Spurgeon once said that our anxiety does not empty tomorrow of its sorrow. It only empties today of its strength. Now, let me say it another way. Uh, our, our anxiousness doesn't, doesn't, doesn't help tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow will deal with itself. But when we're anxious today, it just saps us of strength today. That's why it's important to be still and know that God is God. There's a reason that the psalmist wrote that. Is that there's sometimes we can't figure stuff out. Sometimes nothing makes sense. We just gotta be still and know that God is God. Don't you know panic leads to pressure? And pressure bursts pipes. Yeah. Yes. It is impossible to hear the Holy Spirit in a panic. It's impossible to move by the power of God if we have so much anxiety that we are reacting, that we are just doing stuff, that we're not responding. We're, 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 we're just reacting in ways that make us feel like we're doing something. But emotions don't have a brain. God never asked us to bear tomorrow's burdens with today's grace. Not tomorrow. God only asked us to deal with today, where today is. That's why, that's why the, the, the psalmist says, give us what? That, that's what Jesus said in the model prayer. Give us this day. He said, tomorrow take care of yourself. Amen. So this day, and grace from Jesus comes like mercy. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. That ought to make us shout that whatever happens today, tomorrow is another day. 
the drama called life. I remember one day driving uh, in Houston, I got to the corner. There was always at least one person out there wanting, you know, begging. You know, they used to call them all, they used to mean something, but now we just call them panhandlers, amen. He was out there asking for money and I had no cash. And I, I rolled down the window and I said, I have nothing to give you, but I'm asking God to bless you. And he looked at me and he said, well, God bless you too. And let me tell you something, your hair is so pretty. <laughs> Don't go. 
supplication. That means we got to petition God. Comes from the, the word desis that, that refers to making one's specific needs known unto God. We pray in generality too much sometimes. Sometimes we need to pray for exactly what it is that we're asking God to do. Some of us pray general prayers because we don't really think that God wants to hear all of those details. But let me tell you something. Your neighbor probably don't want to hear them all, but God is waiting to hear every single detail. Petition is, is making an urgent request unto God. Anybody ever had an urgent request? Anybody just had to say in the middle of the night, Lord, help? That's a petition. It's the urgency. And sometimes we have to stay right there. I know that folks that say God ain't hard to hear. We ain't got to keep saying the same thing over again. But petition is different than ask. When it's urgent, I will keep asking. I will keep asking till I see. Not because I don't believe God can do it, but I don't want God to think for one moment that I've left that place. Amen. Like that sorrow Phoenician woman who kept acting and kept acting Jesus until Jesus said, Woman, what you need? Sometimes we got to walk like that. We got to ask with urgency. Petition the keeping power of God. You want God to keep you? Petition. You want your healing? Petition. You need some deliverance? Petition. You need God to meet every need? Petition. Yes, Jesus says, consider the lilies of the field. But you need to say, God, I'm not a lily, but you know my name. And I need you. Can't get so complacent in the relationship that we don't ask urgently sometimes. Our children expect us to meet their needs. Amen? Amen. But sometimes, sometimes it's that tug that says, Mama, Daddy, can I have it, please? That moves our heart. You think we don't have to act the same way with our daddy? <laughs> daddy, heal me, please. Yeah. Daddy, fix it, please. God, yeah. Daddy, deliver, please. Yeah. Petition. Yeah. Want this land healed? We got a petition. Yeah. And we can't just petition one after the other. We talked about this week. We got to learn how to pray more together. Yeah. I don't want anybody to ever think that you got to wait for an announcement to come to this altar. Yeah. I don't care what's going on. If the Holy Spirit says move, move. Yeah. And anybody who don't like it, let them take it up with God. Yeah. We got to ask the Savior to help us. We got to petition urgently. Ask the Savior to help us, to comfort, to strengthen, and keep us because we know that He's willing to aid us and carry us through. We got to pursue peace persistently. Supplication, petition must be accompanied by something, though. We can't just cry out to God with a bellyache. Oh, Lord, do it. Oh, Lord, fix it. But forget to say thank you. Text says for supplication with thanksgiving. And when we do it with thanksgiving, that means that our faith is activated. That we are just hollering out to God. We're hollering out to God with expectation. And that thanksgiving is our praise. Praise is our weapon. And when we find ourselves headed to a reactionary 
and praise. Yeah. When folk talk crazy to you, folks do it all the time. Pump your brakes and praise. When situations happen that we know are unjust, we got to pump our brakes and praise. That doesn't mean sit down. That doesn't mean we don't care. That doesn't mean don't fight for justice. Because we know God in heaven is the praise of his people. We won't worry about it because we know when we praise, God is with us.
We have a peace that allows us to access and know that God is still in control. We will have to suffer some foolishness, but God is still in control. We will continue to go through some difficult days, but God is still in control. We may not understand why it seems that we're always in a fight for justice, but God is still in control. When these times come, we must hold on and pursue peace with persistence and resolve that we're going to trust Yeah. 
the anchor in the Lord. Our souls must be anchored in the Lord. But that's the only way we can pursue peace persistently is that our souls are anchored in the Lord. You're here today and you're dealing with the struggles on life's journey. And we're all going to have them. Sometimes they come like a flood. But God is still raising the standard against that. But you got to be in the phone. You got to be a part of the family of God. you today whether you're online or in the building and you know that you've been feeling tossed on this scene and that you need to be anchored in the Lord let me let me recommend Jesus to you but the Bible says that you will confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead thou shalt be saved that means that you become part of the fold part of the family of God, able to reach out and petition God for peace. Peace. That you pursue persistently. You've already come to Christ, but you're feeling that tossing. And you know that you've not been praying and petitioning like you should. Remember, this altar is open. Welcome to come and lay in on the altar. Trusting God that is already done.
we will not be moved away from you. For no matter what comes, we will pursue peace persistently. And that means we must pursue you. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. And we pray right now, God, in the name of Jesus, that you will touch as only you can. And that when life comes this week, that we will remember to pursue peace and that our anchor, our soul is anchor. Our soul is anchor in you. Amen. Amen. Yeah. 